So now we've looked at the doctrine and talked about why the nautical strike doctrine does not fall to the Navy in what if Malagasy land. Let's look at the plan and the models and the aircraft, which is probably what you all want to see anyway. Um, so if we take the plan in detail, we've talked about how the vital thing for the Madagascan state or the Malagasy state is to keep this access route to Africa open. And they do that with submarines, with the maritime patrol aircraft and more submarines down here. Now, the idea here is that if this is cut off, um, you end up being blockaded. So the Sea Hercules is the Nimrods and the other aircraft, the CASA 212s and the Type 214 submarines. Really, their duty is to keep this area open for the Malagasy state. Now, the Sea Herculeses and the Nimrods also have a roving role, which is another reason why the F-44.5s and the Su-57s have been purchased. And that is, they act as a hunter. So, if you have uh, an enemy carrier group here, an amphibious group here, and another carrier group here, coming to attack the Malagasy state, again, this isn't a scale, then the Sea Hercules, Nimrods, drones, and the stealth aircraft act as reconnaissance assets to hunt and provide target coordinates. It's a lot harder if you're fighting an American group because the range that you have to be to stand off from that group is further than any other group. But it gives you the hunter ability. Now, hunter ability is crucial. And then you have the killer ability. And this is where we'll come on to the models. So long range, pushing out here to the fringes of the Indian Ocean, to the choke points and even into the Atlantic. The long range nautical strike aircraft, the Vulcans. And this is why they've come back into service. The Hustlers. And like I said, to a degree, the F-44.5, the Mantellas. Now, the Mantellas will be hunting, say, Hornets, US Navy carrier uh, aircraft groups, um, Chinese, if it was the Chinese, the J-15s, and if it was the Russians, unlikely um, hunting their Su-33s. But the idea is that the long-range strike component keeps the enemy carrier and amphibious groups away from Madagascar. When you get into the medium range area, so if an amphibious group was preparing to launch an attack or they were trying to overwhelm the Malagasy state, that's when your Gripens, your Mirage 2000s, and what needs to happen is the FC-31s to get this ability. This is where your Gripens and your Mirage 2000s strike. If we're talking a short range, and that's where someone is actually launching an amphibious attack on the Malagasy state, literally everything that can carry a bomb gets into it. And what I need to invest in as a modeler is a harpoon battery, because close range here, you need to have coastal batteries covering the short range arena, which is the harpoon batteries. So I hope that makes some sense, and that's what drives the planning and the modelling. So the long-range nautical strike acids, Vulcans and Hustlers, supported by the Mantellas, medium-range, the Grippins and the Mirages, and short-range, literally anything that can fly and drop a bomb. So we'll get onto the models now. So what do I need to do as a model builder who builds what-if fleets of things? Well, I need to look at new technology. I need to look at new missiles in one in 70 second. And I need to actually start modeling my nautical strike squadrons with the Mirage, the Grippins in particular. And I've already got some Hustlers and Vulcans. I then need to get a shore battery of Harpoons, which is done by fleet scale models in one in 70 second. So let's go through and have a look at what I've prepared for you here. 
Now, the Vulcans have been brought back into service and they are well equipped for the nautical strike role. The Vulcans have been heavily upgraded and updated and they have the ability to fire the AGM-158 JASM or a LARASAM, the Long Range Anti-Ship Missile. They're fully equipped with countermeasures. can carry six AGM-158s internally in their capacious bomb bay and two under the wing. So that's eight anti-ship missiles in total. The Hustlers also need to be kept going. And the Hustler has a speed advantage over the Vulcan at low level. And it's here carrying four 1,000 pound JSALs, AGM-154s. It can also carry the anti-ship missiles. So these are the primary long range strike aircraft. They've got another Vulcan in the loft. Medium range, and these are already in service with my what if forces. You've got the excellent Saab Gripen here with two RBS-15 anti-ship missiles, very potent missiles, two Maverick missiles, and the Gripen is an excellent anti-shipping aircraft. Low level striker, very, very good. The Mirage 2000s, and these are ones in the land attack camouflage, the Tritone camouflage. I need to start making some in the blue camouflage, the nautical camouflage. Now, the Vulcan is fine in this camouflage and the Hustler. They're both appropriate for the maritime environment. These, um, oh, is more in the land attack uh, camouflage. Thankfully, it has survived. I'll put that up there. The pit up probes on these are always getting knocked off. But there we go. So the Mirage 2000 uses the Exocet, the Grip and the RBS 15 and Maverick. And also, when you're talking of striking amphibious landing forces or small missile boats, you've got here the Brimstone, which allows you to swarm attack amphibious boats, making any amphibious attack on the Malagasy shores utterly utterly suicidal and to be honest i don't see the russian black sea fleet doing an amphibious attack around odessa because it would be utterly suicidal so that's another reason why i think it's a bit of a sideshow now assisting the sea hercules is, and the sea hercules is in a box in the garage with the nimrod um, is reconnaissance drones like this one here which is a stealth drone, a Barracuda. Now, stealth um, and fifth gen stuff is really important because it allows you to spot the enemy fleet without them spotting you. So let's have a look at the models. And we have, so the Hustlers can carry the Harpoon, the AGM-84D, Harpoon missile, can carry four of those, quite potent. The Gripen RBS-15, f 16s and Skyhawks, the Penguin. Helicopters can also carry the Penguin, which is a short range anti-ship missile, but very good. And if worst comes to the worst and you feel suicidal, you can attack the enemy fleet with bombs, but it's not recommended. The older missiles, which are now kind of going out of service, we've got the Seagull here, which was used by the Malagasy Buccaneers and Vulcans back in the day. The Sea Skewer, which is also retired, that was used by the smaller helicopters, uh, the AB212s and the AB204, going back even further. Got the Mavericks, which kind of remain in service. The Mavericks are quite good if you're not attacking a big ship, but you're attacking like a Corvette or a Minehunter. They're still quite useful missiles. And of course, we've got the French Exocet, of which the Mirage 2000s can carry too. And we know from the Falklands just how deadly the Exocet, even in its older version, was. So taking things forwards and with the improvements in um, uh, ships and their defensive measures, the plan is to actually uh, focus on the AGM-158C, a long-range anti-ship missile. American missile, very good, and purchase lots of these as they have been doing for the Vulcans. Now, these are going out to NATO countries now, becoming quite popular. So the Vulcan can carry eight of these, which gives you that force multiplier and your ability to overwhelm a ship's defences. 
smaller missiles as well. These are Norwegian from Konsberg. This is the uh, NSM, the Naval Strike Missile. Now, these are a smaller missile, and these will be replacing and have been replacing the Exocet on um, the Rafales and the Harpoons on the Nimrods. So these are a uh, stealthy missile, very good, and they will be replacing the RBS-15 on the Grippens. The Grippens intended to serve till 2030. They'll also be replacing um, the uh, missiles on um, surface batteries and taking the role of harpoons on the missile ships. And then these are already in service, but for attacking uh, small ships, or attacking uh, landing craft, you've got uh, small diameter bombs, which I can't find an example of. But you've got my Glide Bomb GBU-38, which is a GBU-38 with a, a proper seeker head and glide wings to give it standoff range. And you've got the Brimstone. So that's what I'll be focusing on now, is building up these fleets and actually making some specialised models of um, the nautical strike aircraft. So... This is a Gripen in the older scheme, uh, the two grey scheme, two tone grey scheme. And it's in that scheme for a reason, because it's like a swing rolled squadron. So it does um, land, sea, uh, air. Now, some of my Grippens are dedicated to ground attack and they're in the tritone, uh, the sort of the Israeli scheme. And some of my Mirages are. So I need to now build up some Mirages and some Grippens in specialised nautical squadron schemes because the squadrons do specialise to agree. The Grippens tend to be all around us, but they do specialise. So I've got a uh, UK Azure Blue for the Blue Base and I've got a Valiho um, US Navy um, Blue and I'll be doing a Mirage 2000 uh, in the two blues and a Grippen in the two blues, possibly a Hustler in the two blues I don't think the Vulcan really needs it. This is a good scheme for everything. Um, but that's my plan, to start building some nautical strike-themed models. So I hope um, this has um, given you all a flavour of what I'm building. Thank you to the uh, person that posed the original question. I hope this has answered it. And uh, let me know what you think. Uh, enjoy your modelling and I will create more 172nd What If craziness.